Hi, I'm Dan Hartman, the Medical Director of the Walk-In Clinics in the East Region. It's a pleasure to be here today, and thanks to Karen Brown for inviting me to present an update on the Omicron variant. I'm sure you're all aware that the data on Omicron uh, changes dramatically uh, almost daily. And although my schedule didn't allow me to join you live today, I'm actually making this recording on um, Monday the 20th, which is yesterday. Uh, so um, the data that I'm presenting today is pretty much up to date. The Omicron variant is remarkable in that it has many more mutations than prior variants. And the mutations are in the spike protein uh, of the virus, which is involved in the attachment of the virus particle to the cell. And uh, here's a comparison uh, of the spike proteins of the Omicron with the wild type, which was the original virus, and then the Delta variant um, as well. And you can see all the mutations, uh, which are demonstrated by these little black lines. Each of these black lines is a mutation. And it turns out that most of the mutations are in this region of the spike protein, referred to as the uh, receptor binding domain uh, of, that, of that protein. And um, so many more mutations than we've ever seen before in any, uh, in any other variant. And on the right are uh, schematic 3D diagrams of the protein itself. And you can see the Omicron has all these little discoloration spots are the mutations, insertions, or deletions. And here's where we are uh, as far as current prevalence of the Omicron variant. This is Yale's data showing the uh, so-called S gene target failure proportion of, of uh, COVID cases. Uh, SG target fail S gene target failure is a, uh, a proxy method of detecting the Omicron variant uh, without actually having to perform the, the entire uh, gene sequencing. And it is accepted as being a very accurate um, measure. And so, uh, as you can see by this, uh, this graph here, uh, as of the 15th or the 14th or 15th, uh, Omicron represented about 10% of the cases, uh, but it is expected by probably today, in fact, that we'll be close to 50%. Uh, and then certainly by the, uh, the start of the new year, uh, we're already up to uh, close to 100% of the COVID cases will be uh, the Omicron variant. The Omicron variant was first discovered in the Gauteng province of South Africa um, a little over a month ago now. Uh, the, uh, that province and the country of South Africa really are considered the epicenter of, uh, of, of Omicron, and it's where our attentions are, are really directed to try to see what's going on with this variant. Uh, and as you can see here, uh, this is when the, the data first started coming out. This is about two weeks into the rise. And uh, the black line shows the, uh, the rather dramatic rate of increase of the Omicron variant uh, compared with the other variants. Uh, the blue, for example, is the Delta variant. You can see that the, the Delta variant did not rise uh, nearly as, as fast as the Omicron variant is. So, uh, so Omicron seems to be considerably more infectious than the other variants, uh, likely due to all those perfectly designed mutations in the spike protein that enable it to avoid our immunity, I guess, that we work so hard to obtain. And that is indeed the case, as shown by the RT, or effective reproduction number, of the coronavirus infections in South Africa. Now, the, the effective reproduction number is basically the number of people who we would expect to become infected by one person with the virus. And it does take into account all of our current uh, immunity and protection mechanisms, our vaccines, our social distancing, previous infections, masking, et cetera. Uh, whenever the RT is greater than one, uh, the virus will continue to propagate. Uh, whenever the RT is less than one, the virus stops propagating. And as you can see prior to Omicron, uh, the uh, effective reproduction number kind of hovered between, between uh, one and two, even at the height of the waves. And then suddenly in Omicron, we see the effective reproduction number shooting way up here into the between three and four range. Uh, this, is, this is considerably higher than anything we've ever seen uh, in the entire coronavirus uh, pandemic. And we expect that the Omicron cases uh, can double so anywhere between one and two days. It's just really a dramatic uh, rate of increase. And this slide, this slide just points out the dramatic differences between the effective reproduction number of the uh, of the Delta variant shown here in blue, uh, which would sort of hover around one, get a little over one, 
uh, versus the Omicron variant uh, up between three and four. And the reality that Omicron is escaping our immunity is demonstrated very nicely by this experiment that attempted to demonstrate how well our neutralizing antibodies do against Omicron compared with the native alpha virus. And uh, the green dots here that you see are the serum of patients that received the vaccination for COVID but also were infected with COVID. And the orange dots that you see are the serum of people uh, who received the vaccination only. Uh, and uh, uh, here on the y-axis is this FRNT50. Uh, that's basically, it's called the focus reduction neutralization test, uh, which is a concentration of serum with antibodies necessary to reduce viral plaques by 50%. Uh, the higher the value, the more dilute the serum can be, and so the more effective are the neutralizing antibodies. And so they took the serum of people, uh, and first they added uh, the native virus here, and then they added the Omicron virus to the same serum, and they said, oh, let's, let's compare the differences. Uh, the numbers on top are the mean, uh, the geometric mean of the dilutions, and you see with Omicron, we've taken a big hit. Basically, we see a 40 times reduction, and we can think of this as that the, that the neutralizing antibodies are 40 times less effective uh, against Omicron as they were against the native virus. And of course, this, this is uh, the reason for what we're seeing so much of in our practices the past couple of weeks is many people uh, testing positive for COVID who have been vaccinated. Uh, it seems like Omicron is uh, pretty much escaping our vaccinations. But the good news for us is that although our vaccinations have pretty much lost their neutralizing antibody effectiveness against Omicron, our boosters are incredibly good. And, and that's demonstrated nicely by a similar experiment that just came out about a week ago. And uh, we can see here the standard uh, two-shot Moderna vaccine up in here, the two-shot Pfizer vaccine here, and the J&J uh, one-shot vaccine is here. Uh, and we can see just like the prior experiment that um, even for those who were just vaccinated less than three months ago, that we're taking a 43-fold hit in the neutralizing antibodies uh, ability, uh, and, and even more so in the Pfizer. Um, and, and if you're greater than six months, you're just off the charts. We can't even give a number here. Uh, it's just completely lost its neutralizing effectiveness. Uh, but um, amongst those who have been vaccinated and been infected, they're doing pretty well. They're doing pretty well, and they're doing fairly well. And, uh, and for those who have had a vaccination plus a booster, not been infected, vaccination plus booster, we see them doing also pretty well, only a six-fold or four-fold reduction in Moderna and Pfizer respectively, and a 13-fold reduction uh, in the J&J um, &J vaccine. Um, and, you know, and in addition, it seems like uh, the booster vaccines um, have also been uh, providing some kind of additional immunity beyond the neutralizing antibodies, perhaps T cell mediated or other uh, types of immunity that has been very effective in, in preventing serious disease amongst those who are infected. Um, and so really in, the, in, in this current Omicron wave, um, I really don't think we can overstate the importance of the booster doses. Well, a very important question, of course, with Omicron is what is this morbidity compared with the other variants? And there might be some reason for optimism here if we go back and look at the epicenter, the Gauteng province of South Africa, and this data came out from there about four or five days ago. And, and uh, although we can see this, of course, this very rapid, steep uh, increase in the amount of cases, uh, we can see that it's almost reached 100% uh, of the maximum cases during the Delta wave in a much shorter time period, we see that the hospital admissions is only at about 45% of the maximum during the Delta wave, and the deaths lags even further behind, about 10 to 15%. So although it may be too early to, to say for sure, there might be more of a lag perhaps than we used to, and I, and I think we need to give this more time, there, there's some reason for cautious optimism here uh, that perhaps the morbidity maybe due to people's prior immunity or whatever, but maybe the morbidity of this variant uh, is, less, is less than Delta. We need to obviously keep a very close eye on this data uh, from South Africa.
And this is another slide from uh, from the, the country of South Africa showing that uh, of those patients who are hospitalized for COVID, uh, the percent who are who are dying is considerably less. Uh, and again, another reason for perhaps some cautious optimism. And one last optimistic slide, again, from Gauteng province. This just came out two days ago. Uh, pretty clearly showing that the amount of cases of Omicron in red has taken a turn. And uh, this is actually very, very good news. Uh, so um, just want to leave you with that uh, little bit of optimism. And thank you all for listening. Uh, my name is Dan Hartman, and here is my contact information. Um, please uh, send me an email or a text or anything. Um, I welcome all uh, questions and comments. Thank you.